Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This is video 4 for part 4, the analysis process, introduction to data flow diagram. In this video, we will discuss how we can change from a logical DFD into a physical DFD. What is our expectation for students who are currently watching this video? We would expect all the students should be able to understand a case study, able to identify entity, data flow, process, and data store, understand the process steps to draw a data flow diagram. That includes a context diagram, diagram zero, and child diagram. Students also should be able to identify common DFD error. All of this can be referred back to video part 1 until video part 3. If you are still having problems in one of these expectations, you should go back watch all the previous videos or please contact your lecturer. This video will actually explain in details step 6 of creating a data flow diagram. Before we go into further of this topic, you need to understand the different types of DFDs that can be created. First is current DFD, where this DFD will show us how the data flows in the current process now. This usually shows the business processes of an organization that we are investigating. A proposed DFD, this is how we will visualize how we like the data flow diagram to be created. This is still also referring to the business process of the organization. Logical data flow diagram is the essence of the process itself. This is where we will look into how would we like the system to be developed. Physical data flow diagram will show us the implementation of a process. This is a very detailed data flow diagram which it will be much easier for a programmer or a system analyst to develop the system later. And lastly, a partition, a partition physical data flow diagram. This is for a higher level design or system architecture for the proposed system. We will discuss more on partition physical data flow diagram in video part 6. We will need to understand what is the difference of logical and physical data flow diagrams. Logical DFD will usually show us what happened in the system or the business. It will focus more on the business and it will show us how the business will operate. And it does not concern on how the system will be constructed or developed later. Usually, it will describe the business event that will take place and all the data that is required and produced by each of the event. Physical DFD will give us the what and the how of a data flow diagram. Usually, this is where it will show how the system will be implemented and it will depict the process or the proposed system that we will be developing later. This topic will focus on physical DFD, where physical DFD will model the implemented implementation system. And usually, to draw a, dif a physical DFD, we will start with the child diagram, or you can also start with level zero diagram or diagram zero. We need to add few more implementation details such as we need to indicate whether the process is manually or automatically. Also, we need to describe the form of the data stores 
and the data flow, meaning that if the data store should be a database or a physical filing system. And we also need to add few more extra proce processes for maintaining the data. This table shows us the common features of a logical and physical database. Uh, sorry, logical and physical data flow diagram. As you can see here, the logical DFD focus more on the business process. So you need to really understand how the business process is being represented in a logical data flow diagram. Whereas a physical data flow diagram is more on representing the system itself. We can see in this diagram how a logical data flow diagram is being progressed into a physical data flow diagram. It will always start with the current data flow diagram, with the current logical data flow diagram, where it will show the current system of the business organization itself. Next, for a new logical data flow diagram is where we start to put any input, output and processes that is required in the new system or in the proposed system for a logical data flow diagram. Then for a physical new, for the new physical data flow diagram, we will show or it will derive data flow based on how we look at the process from the new logical data flow diagram. Here, the most important part is where we need to determine is there any interfaces that is exist and what are the necessary data stores that is needed in the process. So this is an example of a logical data flow diagram. As you can see here, all of the process involved shows the business process of the organization where a customer who wants to purchase a system need to identify the system. The price can be referred to the price data store and then the system should be able to compute the total cost of the order and then um, going through the transaction and issuing the receipt and at the end to give back a receipt from a customer after we receive the payment. Here you can see that the process does not go through any details about physical implementation of the activities. Now let's see how uh, or what happens when we change the logical DFD into a physical DFD. So this is actually the same process as the previous slides. As you can see here, the processes have become more detailed where we actually identify whether the process should be manually or automatically. The physical data flow diagram also shows us a new data store that is involved. Even if you look at the data flow itself, it has become more accurate and more details on what data actually flows from a customer going through all the processes and give it back to the customer. So here we can see that the physical data flow diagram shows process involved with going into detail about the physical aspect of each of the activities. So we can see here the difference between the logical and the physical data flow diagram. Again, I, as I mentioned in the previous slides, logical DFD only define the business and how the business operates. And usually we will use this logical DFD to communicate with our users by explaining to them on how we think the system should look like. 
Whereas for a physical data flow diagram, this is how we model the system that we wanted to implement. And we use the physical data flow diagram to communicate with our programmers or our system analysts. So they would know what are the processes involved, the detailed processes involved, and also what are the data stores and how will the data flow from the entity to the output entity. Usually here, the processes will be more detailed where it will show us the different processes involved, whether it is manually or automated. And we might also add new process or data store that we think is important or should be included in the physical data flow diagram so it can show us clearly how the system should act when the data is being inputted into the system. So for logical DFD, it is usually used for communication with the users and it should show us um, a better understanding of the business uh, and also, it should eliminate all the redundancies process and it, um, the logical DFD will help us to create a better physical model of the system itself. Okay. For physical DFD, this is where we'll clarify the process uh, which performed by human or which process that should be automated. And each of these process must must be um, showed in detail. Sequence of processes becomes more important in physical data, physical data flow diagram where it must show in a particular order. Also, it should show us if there's any data, temporary data stores involved and for each of the outputs or the file, we should name it with the actual name of the files and the printout. There are many items in a physical DFD that is not found in a logical DFD, such as we should show if there's any manual processes involved. We should also show specific or detailed process for adding, deleting, changing and updating the record. It also should show if there's a specific process for data entry and for verifying certain processes, validation processes to ensure accurate data input. Physical DFD should also show if there's any sequencing processes to make sure that the order of the record or the order of the process is in a sequence. It also should show if the process produce all the unique system output and also is there any immediate data stores or temporary data stores that we need to create it. Also, you need to make sure that all the file names that is used for your, dat for your data store is using the actual names and also if there's any control that should be done in the process to make sure that the task is complete or if there's any error condition that we need to consider. This is an example on how we can develop a uh, from a logical DFD into a physical DFD. As we can see here, in the current logical child diagram, there's two processes involved, process 5.1 and also 5.2, and it will also give us one data store which is data store customer master so as you can see here the logical the current logical child diagram actually shows us a simple business process that we wanted or that is being currently done in the organization whereas in a physical child diagram as you can see the processes become more from two process in logical child diagram becoming four processes in physical child diagram where each of these process has become more detailed.
So in, a, in this physical chart diagram, the first process 5.1 shows that we need to uh, type in the customer information. Process 2, we need to validate the customer information. Validation process is being included here where it also shows us what happened if there is any errors when we do the validation. The validated customer information will give us into the process 5.3 where this process actually involves the interface of the, of the system where we visually confirm all the customer information to the customer. And only in process 5.4 is where we store all of the customer report. So... In between process 5.1 and 5.2 in the current logical chart diagram, we have added another two processes to show that that is how the system will react or that is what are the more detailed process that will happen when we wanted to record a customer information. So as we can see here, physical child diagram will give us a complete system process compared to the simple business process in the logical child diagram. This is another example on how we can, um, how we can compare the current physical child diagram into a proposed physical child diagram. After you created a physical diagram for the current system, you should be able also to transform it into a proposed physical child diagram. For an example, in the current physical child program for the organization, we can see that process 1.1 where, we'll, where we will manually check the prerequisite of the student before we check the, av the availability of the class by checking a data store from another system and then the third process is where we will enroll the students into another database, another data store for another system. Whereas for the proposed physical child diagram, we will we should be able to do an automated process for all of the for all of the processes where checking the prerequisite checking for the availability and enrolling the the students into class can be done automatically for the new proposed system so that is the end of part 4 on how we can change from a logical DFD into physical DFD. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.